Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today we're taking a look at the Z490 ARS Master and if you're asking yourself right now wait why are we looking at a several generation old Intel board well let me tell you this is not an Intel board this is quite special and also not all that special so this is a socket AM4 Ryzen motherboard with the Z490 chipset now this is not the same Z490 chipset that Intel uses. This is actually a sort of upgraded version of X470 as you can see right here because these are exactly like pretty much the same board. Um, so on the left we have an X470 Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi and here's the Z490 Aorus Master. And if you look at these, yeah, pretty much the exact same board um, because this board was created with uh, one thing in mind, and that is to have PCI Express 4.0 on the chipset, which X470 didn't do. And you might also remember how AMD released some, uh, I think it was an ASRock board with the so-called B550M chipset, which was actually just B450, but the primary GPU like 16X slot had 4.0 from the CPU. This is more or less the same thing, except that all the slots uh, and the M.2s should be 4.0 on this one. Um, which they do by using this PLX chip. So this right here is the so-called Z490 chipset, which should just be the exact same silicon that they use on X470. And it works with this uh, PLX chip, which um, as far as I know, takes um, like takes the CPU lanes and then just kind of, you know, like what a PLX chip does, it just like duplicates the PCI Express lanes. It doesn't duplicate bandwidth, but it can duplicate lanes. Um, and as far as I know, instead of using the 3.0 lanes from the chipset, the board uses the 4.0 lanes from the CPU through this PLX chip to like spread onto like your M.2s and your uh, secondary PCI Express slots and all that stuff. That's pretty much the thing with this motherboard. Um, and AMD named it Z490 because at the time X570 didn't exist and apparently Intel Z490 also didn't exist. Uh, and they made this motherboard and then Intel came out with Z490 and apparently X570 also came along and this thing was never released. Um, it still exists though, as you can see. So, um, a friend of mine by the name of FCR uh, Don't Die X got his hands onto this engineering sample motherboard from Gigabyte. Um, it does work. He has, um, like, run CPUs on this, though, well, it's an unsupported motherboard. <laughs> um, so, the newest BIOS that's just on this, like, the, the BIOS that the board came with, because you can't get a newer one unless you, like, know people like Gigabyte, which he doesn't. Um, the newest BIOS on this only supports up to Zen Plus, so you can't run Ryzen 3000 or newer on this. And also it seems that the second BIOS chip on this thing is dead. Like, um, are these the BIOS chips? These might be the BIOS chips. I'm not entirely sure where the BIOS chips on this board are, but like one of the chips seems to be dead on the board, he said. So, you know, it's it's not in a perfect condition, but it does work on the one BIOS chip, and it does work just fine with, like, Ryzen uh, 2000 and 1000 CPUs. Um, yeah, like, the main point of owning this board is that you own an AMD Z490 board. That's, like, the main part. <laughs> um, yeah, so... That, that That's, like, the special part of the board out of the way. It's, it's basically just an X470 Aorus Gaming 7, um, but with a PLX chip that makes all your slots in M.2s uh, 4.0. Also, also, I see that there's an additional M.2 slot on this, which the Gaming 7 doesn't have. So, like, there's some more minor differences on the board. But, um, yeah, like, largely it's the same thing. And, crucially, it is also the same VRM. Uh, because what channel would this be if I didn't take a look at the VRM? Oh, and also this thing's missing the Wi-Fi card. Um, yeah, so VRM wise, um, well, it's it's the same as the X470 Aorus Gaming 7. Um, so, yeah, um, 
VRM. So we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 phase V core and a 1, 2 phase uh, SOC. Our V core VRM is actually 10 phases, however, they are doubled. Um, so our voltage controller right here is an IR35201. Uh, this controller is very familiar. We've had it on the Z270 Apex, the Z170 SOC. Uh, I believe the Z170 OC formula also has it. So like this is a, a very common from, from the time uh, high-end international rectifier voltage controller. And I believe this can at, at max, I think it can do eight or eight plus two phases. I'm not entirely sure. In this case, it's running in five plus two phase mode. Um, and our five phases for V-Core get doubled by some IR3599s. Uh, so there's one here and there's uh, four more on the back, which turns our five phase V-Core into a 10 phase. And the SOC is a true two phase. As for the power components, our V-Core VRM is using the IR3553. This is a, f not four amps. This is a 40 amp smart power stage. And the SOC VRM, for some reason, is using the IR30, man, I really can't write today, 3556, it's saying, on the, uh, like that, that there's a list on hardware locks that like lists all the VRM information and it's saying the SOC is using IR3556. And this does kind of look like a six. I first thought they were IR3550s, but it does kind of look like a six. So I'm just going to believe them that this is uh, in 3556. Um, I don't actually know the amp like amperage spec for the 56. I know for the 50 and the 55, it's a, a 60 amp. Uh, smart power stage. So I'm just going to assume that this one is also a 60 amp smart power stage. Uh, yeah. Oh, what just happened? So yeah, um, VRM on this thing actually looks pretty good. Like it's it's not on the same level of insanity that you see these days, which is honestly I like the level of insanity we see these days because there's no longer motherboards that have VRMs that might blow up. Uh, that wasn't a guarantee in the B450 days, especially the B350 days, or also for some Z370 motherboards. Um, so, yeah, this VRM is pretty good. Like, this is uh, four more phases than the X370 Gaming K7 had, which was already enough to power a 1800X, like a Ryzen Zen 8 core. Um, admittedly, the Zen Plus 8 cores pulled more power, which probably the reason why this VRM is beefier. Um, but yeah, it's it's a 10 phase with 40 amp smart power stages. This is gonna be fine. And the SLC is also gonna be fine. Like what I assume 60 amp, like two phases of those, like you, you should be able to just uh, to overclock an APU with this just fine. So yeah, uh, VRM just fine. It also has a really nice heatsink like a, a proper finned heat sink with a heat pipe. Um, so that that's that's fine. Like if this gets some airflow, the uh, VRM thermals are not gonna be a problem. So yeah, that's gonna be fine. Um, then one more thing that I always like to highlight is we have this handy connector right over here. This will enable you to uh, hook up to the I2C bus of the IR35201. So you can just solder uh, a connector to this and then use an Elmer EVC with this board, which is always nice to have. Um, Cause like sometimes the BIOS doesn't have all the options you would want. Um, and sometimes the BIOS is just a bit buggy. Um, so using this, you can just talk directly to the controller over I2C and you're just gonna get rid of all those problems. So you can just, you know, use an EVC with this. And why does my tablet always do this? And uh, yeah, so other than that, the output filtering looks pretty standard. The input filtering looks pretty standard. Like capacitor configs or motherboard are not as exciting as GPUs. 
Like on, on motherboards, you even regularly see like 6.3 volt capacitors simply because they use these for like everything else on the motherboard as well that isn't 12 volt. So like, like CPUs are a lot less power draw than GPUs. Like, um, well, recently we had some 200 watt plus CPUs in mainstream platforms, but like a 2700X, I think, kind of tops out at around 200 watts. Doesn't, shouldn't really go over that unless you like really, really push it. Um, so, you know, probably doesn't matter that much. And also I think AMD CPUs in general don't really need that big of an output filter. I, I think I generally see more output filter on Intel CPUs. So yeah, like the, the, this is like essentially the same output filtering I have on my B550A or as master. Um, and then the input filtering, we have like three 16 volt, 270 microfarad caps. Can't really see on any, on the other pictures. Is there like maybe one on where the image is cut off? So yeah, uh, other things, we have a postcode. It's always nice to have a postcode because postcodes are very useful. I like postcodes. <laughs> uh, it isn't a bit of a weird spot on this one. Like I've seen, I've seen postcodes up in this corner, and up in uh, lower in this corner. To be honest, I kind of prefer them here, but I know a lot of people have issues with that, especially like if basically the thing is, if you were gonna put something into this slot, like a graphics card you're not going to be able to read the postcode. Um, and also a lot of people like to have the motherboard angled so that they see it from this side. Well, I like to have my motherboard angled so that I see it from this side because of how my face change cooler hooks up. So, and, and you can see how the postcode placements like favor some of the orientations while not favoring others. Um, so yeah. So, I mean, the main thing is that it has a postcode. I kind of like it when it's in the lower right corner, but I, I, think, I think a lot of people will be happy that it's not in the lower right corner. So, yeah, it, 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 it should be fine. Then, um, this thing also has dual BIOS, as I said before, and my tablet just did it again. I didn't even touch the screen this time. Um, yeah, it should have dual BIOS. Does it have a switch? Please tell me it has a switch. The image is cut off a bit. Let, let's just take this one. Do I see a switch anywhere? Oh yeah. There's there's some switches right here, right next to the postcode. How, how did I not see these? Yeah. So these should be for... Uh, one should be selecting dual or single BIOS mode, and the other one should be for selecting which BIOS chip is active if you are in single BIOS mode. Because Gigabyte boards have automatic dual BIOS, so if the board detects that you had like a boot failure several times in a row, it will automatically switch to the other BIOS chip, which is very useful for NAMIs and very annoying for RAM overclockers. So on high-end Gigabyte boards, you get these switches to just turn off the automatic dual BIOS, and then you get another switch to just select which BIOS you're on, because dual BIOS is still useful, but mostly only when uh, you get to decide which BIOS chip is active. Um, yeah, so you, you do get BIOS switches, um, yeah. You also get this like OC button. I'm not entirely sure what this does. It probably loads a preset or something. Um, I hope it's rebindable to like, uh, well, I, I don't think these boards have the rebindable reset switch that newer Gigabyte boards have, where you can set it to a safe boot button, which is really, really useful. This one might still be rebindable to like a power or a reset switch, otherwise I, don't really think this button is any useful. Like, I've had boards with this button and I've never used it. Um, so that should about tell you how useful it is. Um, other things. Just kind of taking a look at the motherboard now if there's anything I missed. Don't really think. Yeah, I think I said everything I wanted to say. So, yeah, that's the um, the Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Master, except that it's an AMD motherboard. So, you know, it's just, <clears throat> just kind of interesting. 
Um, Linus Tech Tips will be making a video about this thing sometime soon as well, because FZR has sent this motherboard that you see an image of right now to them. Um, I don't know when the video is going to come out. I, I suppose they're going to make it in like a week and then it's going to be on floor plane for a bit and then they'll release it in like a couple weeks after. Um, but he has sent the board to them. So they're going to be making a video as well. Um, you know, uh, so here's, here's a little teaser on, on what they're going to show off. Uh, they might have a better explanation for what the Z490 part is actually special about, like... I, I just heard, oh, it, like, it has a PLX chip, and I just heard, oh, yeah, it's it's like that B550M thing, which was actually just B450, and it's just for PCI Express speed. Um, and, yeah, and, I mean, it, the, 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 it's actually just special because it's a board that doesn't exist officially. Like, this thing was never sold. This is an engineering sample. Um, and it just, it's just kind of cool to know that it exists and then and, and seeing it. And, and also because it has a name that's like an Intel thing and it's an AMD board. But anyway, I'm rambling on at this point. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, goodbye.